How's it going guys, it's Billy here, and in today's video we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to treat this more as of a tutorial rather than just a plain video where I'm building a computer or doing something with a computer. I found this one pretty interesting because I had to look it up myself to know the proper way. Now this wasn't now, this was a couple years back already. But just to bestow some knowledge upon you guys, in case you guys are tinkering with your own computers, maybe you're repairing something, maybe you're upgrading something, or maybe you're building it brand new for the first time, this might be applicable to you. So I hope that it will be. So let's get right into it. So doctor, what do we have right here? So this is our patient over here. Uh, it's using a Z87 motherboard with a G3258. If you guys don't know what that is, that's one of the, that was the 20th anniversary Pentium that was uh, completely unlocked multiplier so you can overclock it to you know whatever not whatever speeds within you know manageable speeds anyway uh, and you could it was it was a beast it's only a dual core it only has two threads but it was still pretty neat out so I've had that one for a little while now but it seems like I used to have this motherboard with uh, my old processor you guys probably remember it from a previous video basically what happened is I don't know if in transport or something else happened but uh, the motherboard is pretty much fried so basically what happens is only in these two dim slots does the RAM actually work. I've cleared like the CMOS battery for it. I've tried a whole bunch of different things, reseated the CPU, tried a bunch of dim slots, uh, like tried the RAM in different dim slots. Like I would have it in the proper dual channel configuration, but it didn't like that at all. Uh, and I also had to, there's a whole bunch of things I tried to do with it. And then sometimes I, I don't, there was a lot of problems with it. And basically it came down to the motherboard pretty much being borked. So what I did was I basically went and brand new, bought this brand new. This was only 60 bucks actually at a local retailer over here. Um, I don't really know if I'm gonna be, it says that it's the best motherboard for the Pentium 20th anniversary edition processor CPU not included of course, but I don't think that's the case. Like I don't know if it's gonna be the best one or not, but it was only 60 bucks. Uh, I basically just needed a motherboard to fit the, the CPU inside of it and of course the, the video card for it because that one doesn't have any integrated graphics so that's why you need the external GPU. So basically what I'm going to be doing in this video is I'm going to be showing you guys how to clean the CPU that has all the nice yummy thermal paste on it using two key things. Using one isopropyl alcohol over here. Uh, I don't know if percentage really matters but I just went with 70% over here. And number two some coffee filters. Yeah just some plain coffee filters that you can get at your local grocer. Uh, essentially the idea is that instead of using something like paper towel, because paper towel has fibers in it, these don't. So this is what we're going to be using to actually clean the processors off with the isopropyl alcohol as well, rubbing alcohol. As I mentioned, I don't know if percentage actually matters. I got 70. Maybe go for the more expensive stuff if you're into it. But yeah, so this board itself, I don't think there's anything super, super fancy about it. It's just a plain motherboard, but like I said, I got it for 60 bucks. Uh, they don't really make Z97 boards anymore, not brand new at least. A lot of them are going, you know, their warranties are out. And that's actually what happened with this one here. The warranty was out on it. So that's why I went ahead and bought a brand new one. I'm just going to get that one recycled afterwards. But yeah, I'm going to show you guys how to actually clean off the CPU itself and uh, just show you how to get that gunk off of it. And I'm going to be reinstalling it into this one afterwards. So I can do some fun stuff with this computer afterwards. Going to also be making another video about it, especially for you guys that want to learn a little bit about some basic overclocking. I'm going to teach you guys how to do that with this motherboard as well and this uh, CPU combination. But as I mentioned, uh, they're going to be different depending on your CPU and your motherboard combo. But I'll kind of give you some of the basics and the rundown. But for this case right over here, let's get right to cleaning and make sure that CPU is clean, nice and clean with the isopropyl alcohol and the coffee filters. So of course, the first thing that we're gonna have to do if we're gonna be cleaning off a CPU and reapplying a you know a new CPU cooler to it or any new thermal compound or anything else like that, we're gonna have to take this, at least the motherboard out of the tray. So I've gone already ahead, basically removed all of the extra little peripherals to it, the uh, video card, all the dim slots already, uh, any of the power cables connected to it, and of course, all the little other fan slots in there, any of the things to, uh, just basically anything that's connected to it right now. Uh, next, I'm gonna remove these standoffs to this thing and actually get the motherboard out, remove the CPU cooler manually, and then that's when we can actually start cleaning it. Alrighty, folks, and as we can see over here, we have the Cooler Master, the 212 Evo over here, and you can see we have all the nice little thermal gunk on there, nice and kind of kicked on. Looks like there's actually a little bit too much application, I think. I don't know if there is such thing as too much, but anyway, that kind of looks like too much for me. There's a little lot of gunk here, and I kind of spilled it a little bit over on the motherboard. We'll clean the motherboard after too. Not like it's getting really much, much usage after this, but eh, who cares? Might as well keep it nice and clean too, even though it's going to go to recycling anyway. But as you can see, all the gunk over here. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our coffee filters. Um, don't really need much to do this. It's a pretty easy step overall, and probably the easiest thing that you can do when actually either replacing a CPU uh, replacing the cooler, applying new thermal paste, whatever you might be doing that involves cleaning it. And this is basically what you're gonna have to do. So take your uh, 
Take your coffee filter over here. Take your take your isopropyl alcohol, your rubbing alcohol, open it up. Make sure to take all the safety stuff off of it and also make sure you know how to even open it too. <laughs> Apparently I have some trouble with that. Uh, just take a little bit and uh, put it on the actual on the actual uh, coffee filter itself. Just kind of soak it just a little bit so it gets in there nicely. Kind of like you're tending to a wound a little bit. You put a little bit on there. You take this afterwards and you kind of just rub it on there and just kind of try to take off as much of it as you can. Kind of like that. There are some, there are some things that you can buy afterwards that do kind of make the little thing cleaner. Because one thing that you're going to note afterwards on both the CPU and on the cooler itself, yeah, it's really kicked on really, really hard there. The alcohol kind of, how, oh, you could, don't breathe that stuff in. Um, you'll really notice it really comes off with it. Um, it really helps. There are some products that you can buy because afterwards there will be a little bit of a, kind of a tinge to it. That it'll never be like the same shininess. There are some products, as I mentioned, I'll leave them in the description below. I've never used them personally, but I've seen a couple of the YouTube accounts that actually do use them that make the, the actual surfaces to make them nice and shiny again. I, sometimes you're gonna need a couple rounds of this. I'm gonna grab another round of the actual coffee filter and isopropyl alcohol, just because there seems to be quite a bit of it on there. And I'll do the same thing afterwards. Use it again to, to dry it off. Because right now, I'm just using it to try to take it off, because right now it's really, really stuck on there. So I'm gonna try to get as much of it off as possible. Really get in there, really get in on those crevices. And yeah, as I mentioned, it's never going to be 100% again. You might get it on yourself, just make sure not to eat it or anything like that. Uh, if you have any animals, maybe just suggest uh, not keeping them near you when you're doing this kind of stuff, just so they don't accidentally eat it afterwards. But yeah, as I mentioned, it's never going to be 100% shiny. There's always going to be that little bit of kind of that silver thermal pasty tinge to it. But, you know, what are you going to do? It's kind of the thing about reusing it afterwards again. You know, it's never going to look brand new again. Here, let me just take this one over here and kind of dry it off. And kind of last minute uh, little little thermal things on there, yeah. And make sure none of the none of the fiber, none of the uh, actual coffee filter itself also stays on there. Just make sure it's nice and smooth afterwards. Maybe I'll just go one more time with the alcohol just to make sure that it's actually nice and cleared off all the way through. And then afterwards, yeah, just finish it by drying off with the actual uh, coffee filter itself instead. And then afterwards, yeah, should be good to go. I think we do a little before and after on this thing. But as you can see, this is looking, it's looking a lot cleaner. You can actually see the surface there here. I'll even shine it in the light a little bit from before. You can just see that cakey, gooey thermal paste onto it. I mean, not delicious. And it looks like I've messed up my table too with the metal rubbing on there. But eh, what are you gonna do? White table, it's never gonna look perfect ever again. But yeah, next we're gonna move on to the actual CPU itself. But it's a very similar process and I'm gonna show you how to do that next. Alrighty, as we can see over here, folks, the CPU, nice and gunky as well, with all of that thermal paste. So the handling is gonna just be like any kind of way that you handle the CPU normally when you're inserting it back into your motherboard. Just hold it on the edges, try not to touch the leads on the bottom as best as you can. Uh, thank goodness there are not actually pins on there, but you just don't wanna get like any oils or anything else from your fingers onto there. So try to hold it onto the edges as best you can while you do this. So now I'm gonna go get the coffee filter and the isopropyl alcohol, and same thing. I'm just gonna wipe it down, dry it off to the best of my abilities. I'm gonna just put it back in there as I get the other stuff ready to go for it, just so you know I don't actually rest it on the table instead. So yeah, take our gunky CPU, take our coffee filter with the alcohol on it and just start rubbing it at least off of here as best you can without touching the leads on the back. There is a lot on here, unfortunately. It's looking actually really nasty. I'm gonna try to clean this up as best as I can. But yeah, it's really coming off grossly. And try to fold this over, reuse the other side, try to clean this up as best as possible. I'm gonna try to get it on some of those edges too. Sometimes it comes off, as you can see, it kind of came off the edge over there. It might be hard to see. I'm gonna try to get all of that gunk off of here just to get our CPU nice and prepped for the new motherboard and just to reattach the cooler afterwards. But yeah, try to get in on the little crevices on the lid part of it over there. Just try to, yeah, clean it up as best as possible. When doing it, you can already see, you can already start to read some of the manufacturing things on it right now. Better than it was before. I mean, these things are pretty sturdy and they can handle quite a little bit of uh, I don't want to say abuse, but they can handle quite a bit of punishment if you so wish. But you know, you don't want to really get, let them do that. Instead, you want to try to clean it up and keep it as clean as possible. But yeah, I'm gonna take another one of the coffee filters and the alcohol, and we're gonna just clean up the rest of it. And here we go, just kind of doing, I'm just grabbing a dry one now, just drying it off and making sure there's no alcohol or anything. Any of the little residue just left on it, just in case it was still caked on there. Looks pretty dry otherwise. And this one actually, the shimmer on it, it's not too bad. 
this is still, this CP hasn't been relatively used for too long anyway. You can see over here still has shine on it. So yeah, so what we're basically gonna do now, that's how you clean your CPU. Pretty easy peasy if you ask me guys. So now this one's ready to either have a new CPU cooler on it, move it to a new motherboard, whatever you're gonna be doing for it, that's basically how you clean the CPU. Just throw it the stuff afterwards and yeah, you're basically done and just you know reapply your thermal paste onto the, 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 to the, to it as, again, as you would again. And yeah, that's about it. And there you have it guys, that's pretty much how you clean a CPU. If you wanna get it prepped for a new cooler or if you wanna move it to a new motherboard, whatever, that's how you get all of that thermal compound off. Just coffee filters and some isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol. That's all you need, a little uh, you know, elbow grease and you're basically good to go after that. If you guys have any questions about this or the process or maybe you know of a better way of doing it, be sure to leave me a comment in the comment section below guys. I try to read as many and respond to as many as I can. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press that thumbs up button. But if you didn't, be sure to press that thumbs down button instead. And be sure to let me know why you didn't enjoy this video in the comment section below. But if you really loved it, be sure to subscribe to catch more videos just like this one. Either way though guys, thank you very much for watching today's video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.